Welcome to Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. In the next half hour, you'll obtain insights and tools to transform your life using the biblical principles found in the 12-step program. We believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience because we all have struggles in life. Struggles with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, and relationships to name a few. You'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through life recovery. Your host is Steve Arterburn, founder of New Life Ministries and Women of Faith, author of over 100 books, and teaching pastor at Northview Church in Carmel, Indiana, one of the 20 largest churches in America. Steve is the co-editor of the Life Recovery Bible, the number one selling recovery Bible. With over 3 million copies sold, this is the Bible given to inmates by Prison Fellowship and the Pew Bible for the Salvation Army. Now here's Steve. Hi, Steve Arterman here. Thanks for joining me for Life Recovery Today. I've got a great interview. Actually, I don't have an interview today. It's just me. I'm going to finish up my uh, little series on God wanting us to be able to get over stuff uh, after we get through it. And uh, I did those two segments. But then after we get over whatever we got through, then God wants us to get beyond it. And that's where we're going to spend our time today. One of the uh, books that Dave Stoop and I did that is part of the Life Recovery series is Take Your Life Back. In fact, it's one of the better selling books. I was just filming at Focus on the Family yesterday, uh, a new program for them on depression. And one of the producers said, I continue to go back to that book, Take Your Life Back. And if you've never seen that book, you could order it at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. But really, it's all about not anything owning you. And so what a great time of year to be asking that question, is there anything that owns me? Now, I want to give you the other side of that, going from, oh, wow, something owns me, to what it's like to live with a life taken back. And uh, the first, there are 31 affirmations in Take Your Life Back. And I want to start with the last one, because it's a good one for us who have just gone through 2020, which was a tough year. And we're all hoping that with vaccinations and all sorts of stuff, that 2021 is going to be better. But here's what people did that came out okay. They persevered. Persevering means I am no longer a victim of my past. I persevere through difficult times to experience the blessings that God has for me and for those that I love. So persevering is a wonderful thing to be able to say, look what I persevered through. But now that you have, here's another word that is, is so important in maintaining a life taken back, and that's the word protecting. I avoid dangerous people and places. I protect the gains that I have made by investing in those who help me stay grounded in reality. So let me just say this, if you are already struggling in this new year to persevere and you have no protection for the spiritual progress that you've made, call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and let us help you with that. Now I'm going to take a break and when I come back, we're going to talk about this third area, not just going through, not just getting over it, but getting beyond it. It really is the thing that can bring purpose and meaning to all of that pain that you've been going through. So we'll take this break and we'll talk about that. And you can find this whole message at newlife.com. We'll be back. Are you going through your struggles alone? Do you want someone to talk to to help you through your pain? Do you feel like a failure when you relapse again, telling yourself, next time will be different? Don't walk this path alone anymore. Join a life recovery group today and be a person that your friends and family can be proud of. God created us to be in community, and we believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience. There are life recovery groups all over the country, and if there isn't one in your area, we can help you start one. Life recovery brings recovery to you, right where you are. You'll take a journey with others to find healing and freedom. Whether you're looking to join a group or start one, New Life Ministries is here for you. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or visit liferecoverytoday.net.
Welcome back to Life Recovery today. I was just thinking about when Solomon was a little boy, he loved to tell great jokes. And one of his favorites was the question of what did the psychology book say to the math book? Well, he said, man, you got a lot of problems. Well, if you've got problems, you are not alone. The world full of imperfect people like you and me, and we've all got problems. In fact, I was looking at some statistics and about um, 40 million people uh, have an anxiety disorder, and probably about that many uh, have some kind of depressive episode or they're experiencing chronic depression. Of course, this is where about every day that you wake up, you're feeling pretty sad or depressed you're eating too much or not hardly at all, sleeping too much or have difficulty sleeping. The things that you used to love to do, you have no interest in doing those anymore. You get anxious, you can be argumentative, all sorts of things uh, that just aren't you. And when you start to sink down in that depression, to compound the problem, you have other people coming along saying things like, come on, get better, it's not that bad, look at all you've got to be thankful for. And that just makes it even worse. We've helped a lot of people at New Life with depression. But one of the things that you can be sure of is that the 12 steps work in helping people who are depressed. There is no reason, no reason that you can't, whatever level of depression you're at, you can't get over it and get beyond it. I think you're pretty good at getting through it. In fact, I think... Uh, people that struggle with depression are some of the hardest working people at living at life. But a lot of times it's just going through, but it's not ever getting over and, and then getting beyond. That's what we're going to talk about right here. One of the most amazing things that we can experience is family influence on our lives. And I've said this, and I believe it to be true, that everybody has a job and that is to get over your mother. People say, whoa, wait a second, oh not. No, it's, there's nothing negative about that whatsoever. You could have a great mother, and if you did, and she was fantastic, you have to get over her. Because if you had a fabulous mom that just really equipped you and helped you and made you a strong person, whether you're male or female, when you get into a marriage, you know, if you're the woman, you may be disappointed in yourself all the time because I can't be so much like my mom that I admired so much. You feel inferior. Or if you're the guy, you're comparing your wife to your mother and nobody's ever going to live up to that standard. Also, the other side of that is true. If you had a horrific mother, well, you know, one of the things that is horrible, like if you're a woman, you say, I will never be like my mother. And mother was down here. And so you set that as your standard. I'll never be like that. And sure enough, you're better than her. You're like that. When a great mom is up here. See how horrible that is? You got to get over that. Now, if you're a guy, had a horrible mother, well, you may have a difficult time connecting with your wife. Or your wife, doesn't know it, may be wearing the face of your mother between her shoulders, and all of the stuff that you're doing interacting with your wife, you're really working out some stuff about mom because you've never gotten over her and never gotten beyond her. It's important that no matter what we've gone through, that we are over and beyond it. 1961, Ernest Hemingway committed suicide. His father committed suicide. One of the most tragic things, he had two brothers who committed suicide. Now listen to this. This was a, a sick family. There's also a, a granddaughter who committed suicide. But after his brother, after Ernest Hemingway's brother, one of two, now these are three, three boys uh, that committed suicide in one family after that. But after his brother committed suicide, Ernest had a birthday pretty shortly after that. His birthday present was the gun that his brother used to kill himself. 
Can you imagine if you were him, the kind of pain and struggle and heartache that he had to go through? And like uh, a lot of writers, um, we can really live a life inside of ourselves, separate, distinct, closed off from a lot of people. And we never, ever have a chance to see what God could do if we actually got beyond the thing that we were struggling with. And so I want to talk to you just a little bit about that part. Now, I struggled with depression, and it was very hard for me to get through it and over it. I'd had a horrible, tragic breakup in high school. Then I went to Texas A&M. I became a, the only soloist in the singing cadets at Texas A&M. So people said, well, you're so great. Why don't you go to Baylor and uh, major in music? And so I did. And there I discovered just how mediocre I was. I didn't get it. The first day we're in a big auditorium and the dean of music taps out this rhythm and says, now if you didn't feel the downbeat on this thing, then you probably shouldn't even be here. And I did not feel that downbeat. I was so depressed. I ended up with sunglasses on, headed right over to the clinic there to get antidepressant medication. I got on Elevil. Elevil causes you to gain about 20 pounds and now you're more depressed than ever. That's what I went through. But I had, I had some great guidance. I had an intervention and I literally made a 180 degree turn. And all the things that I had been doing and living in that had led up to that depression, I didn't do anymore. Now, here's, here's what happened to me. My pain, it actually became the foundation or the, or the very uh, reason that I developed a passion uh, and, and a purpose to help other people struggling with depression. And over the years, we've helped hundreds of thousands of people with depression. Now, this is what we call getting beyond something. It's, it's where we, get, we let God do the work because we surrender. And then one day we wake up and say, wait a second, I'm not defined by this. I was refined by this. And I want to do something to help some other people with this. Now, if you're in need of recovery and depression is the problem and you might be medicating yourself with all sorts of other stuff, but if you're in the throes of depression, if you're really at the bottom, it, you're not thinking this is going to be a life mission. You're just trying to live another day. But I'm going to tell you something. The Bible tells us, I'll give you the scripture in the next half, but the Bible tells us that He comforts us in all of our times of struggle so that we can comfort other people. The comfort He gives us, He wants us to give others. Now here's the thing, that assumes that he wants to comfort you right now if you're struggling, and he does. And so I know that the Bible says, if you seek me, I will be found by you, says God. So maybe if you're struggling, and you're depressed, and you need recovery in that area, why don't you just say, God, I need you. I want you. We'll take a break. And we'll come back for more of Life Recovery Today. It's hard to find a trusted friend when you're in crisis. Someone who's been there and understands, but who also has the training and skill to give you practical help. Family, friends, and churches want to help, but often they're not equipped to care for those dealing with problems like addiction and pornography, infidelity, anger, depression. New Life Ministries is here to provide help and hope in life's hardest places. We're not focused on making people feel better. We're focused on helping people do the work that will help them be better. At New Life, we have resources available to help you like books, DVDs, CDs, workshops, and our network of licensed counselors. If you need help, Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and begin your new life today.
Welcome back to Life Recovery Today. So, we get through, we get over, and we need to get beyond whatever it is that we are struggling with. And the verse that I gave you in the first half was this, 2 Corinthians 1.4. He comforts us so in all of our troubles, we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has for us. So I really do believe that like so many other people, your pain can be the passion point. It can be the beginning of a whole other life, a whole new life far and beyond anything you ever dreamed. But before you can do that, there are some areas that you need to um, clean up. You might have even addressed these initially in that getting over part, but I just I want to be sure uh, that we talk about this before we go uh, farther down the way. Okay, so here it is. Grief. If we don't fully do the grief work that we need to do, then we're going to be carrying a bunch of uh, residue of sadness, uh, depression, anguish, longing, all the kinds of things that we experience when we lose someone. But God gives us this gift of grieving that separates us from whatever it is that we lost. If we fully experience the deep sadness of losing something we value, now I don't have to experience that, that sadness uh, every day of my life. In other words, let's just say um, you lost your father. And a father loss is this big. Now, you're either going to grieve this much stuff a little bit over time, and you may never get fully through it, before you die, or we come over and we do the grief work, and then we get through all of that stuff a person normally would have to get through if you lose a dad. Doesn't that make sense? And if we've never grieved, if we've just kept moving right on down the way, then there's a good chance that sooner or later it's going to catch up with us. So, you know, we created a little grief workbook, Dave Stoop and I did, where you go through it and you work the steps and it helps you to grieve, and that's really well done with a counselor. So you want to be sure that there isn't something that you need to grieve. Now here's another thing. When uh, we're working through the steps, we, we look at this verse, uh, James 5, 16, confess your sins one to another, pray for each other that you might be healed, and we see this need for openness. Um, and so in the beginning, when we're at the bottom and, and nothing matters anymore, we might start to be open about our problem. And then as we go along and we realize that this perfectionistic standard we have now for ourselves, I'm going to do recovery perfectly. And when we don't, we can move right back into the world of secrecy and shame. And so we end up with this duplicitous life. I would ask you, is there duplicity in your life? And if so, the way to resolve that is to admit it to yourself, admit it to God, and admit it to the people that you care about. And just say this, you know what, I, I really haven't been completely honest here. And I've, been, uh, I've had some bad attitudes, or I've, I've done some things that I just am not proud of, and I just want you to know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to up my game a little bit here. And I'm going to try to work in that area. So please encourage me to do that. Um, there's another word, and it's the word resolution. Uh, we make resolutions going forward, but man, do we ever need to resolve conflict. Now, sometimes uh, we resolve conflict by sitting down with somebody and talking with them, maybe even with a third party. That's how we resolve it. And after we walk away, we might agree to disagree, whatever it is. But there are a lot of people that are never going to agree with you, and they don't even want to talk to you, but you still have to resolve that issue in your mind. I think the best way to resolve that issue is through communication, making amends, whatever. You're able to fulfill this thing called uh, 
whatever it was that was up to me, I did my part. And I'm not responsible for how this other person uh, re responds to it. But in my mind, if I've done all the things that I could do, then I'm able to say, okay, that is result. I have brought it to resolution. When you start to do some of these things, this, this new vision uh, or this, this new awareness of some gifts and depth and stuff that you have from all that pain and struggle you've gone through, it starts to emerge. If you're in the midst of the pain, you, you can't even imagine. And it, just because you were depressed, it doesn't mean that you're going to go out and, um, and start a clinic for depressed people. But you might have found something that you loved that you gave up when you were depressed and now you have a new uh, mission to go help as many people as possible. Enjoy that activity because it makes you so happy. So it's not just, you know, once I go through something painful, now I've got to go be a missionary or I've got to be a counselor or something. There are a lot of creative ways that we can let the pain become the platform for a new purpose and meaning. And then finally, uh, if you are going to get beyond something, you will not get beyond it without redemptive relationship. You have to have them. And, and if you don't have anybody around you that's encouraging, making a way for you, um, well, I got to tell you, that's where life is. When you can be so open and honest with them that they can be open and honest with you. And then you end up with this intimacy level that actually is healing to both of you. The other day, I was talking to my wife about an issue. And she had dealt with this painful issue since her childhood. And we've talked about it. I've been married almost 16 years. We've talked about it for 17 or 18, very aware of it. And this treatment that she had when she was younger by some other people. And it just hit me. Now, I'm not in it, so I could look at it objectively, and I said, you know what? You never had a chance with them. Because not only this that you've been talking about, but think about this that we've never talked about. She began to cry. She had never seen it before. I had never seen it before. But she said, even now, after almost 16 years in marriage, you, you're still healing parts of me that couldn't be healed any other way. Now, I don't know who felt better after that, her <laughs> or me. That's what God can do when we're present and focused. But if you never get over something or beyond it, well, then, you know, here's the dilemma, big dilemma. You're so obsessed with yourself, you can't be present to somebody else. But when we are beyond ourselves, then, we can get into the lives of other people and find a way that we can contribute to them. We need redemptive relationships. So redemptive, so relational, that we can be open, honest, but more than anything, present. Present to them and present to whatever they need. And maybe with encouragement or sometimes even a little confrontation, maybe we can meet that need. I hope you'll get beyond whatever it is you need to get beyond. All right, we'll take a break. I'll come back for a final segment here. Hope to encourage you. Hope this is going to be a great, great year for you. Let's start it in recovery. Life recovery isn't just about making the courageous choice to give up an addiction or dependency. It's a journey towards health, wholeness, and becoming your very best you. If you need resources to help you in your journey, we can help. There are many life recovery resources that you can do on your own, with a group, or with your church. We have Bibles, workbooks, and devotionals that you can use to work your recovery right where you are. That's the beauty of life recovery. To learn more or to get the Life Recovery Bible or any other life recovery resource, visit liferecoverytoday.net or call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. -E. All 
Thanks for coming back to Life Recovery today. You know, one of the things that we talk about here is whatever we're going through, whatever we've been through, whatever we've done to others or they've done to us, we have some responsibility to deal with it. I wrote down just the other day, accepting responsibility does not always lead to a solution. Irresponsibility never leads to a solution. So we need some courage. And the courage that God gives us, well, it's from really trusting Him with everything that we have, knowing that He is going to be strong, even if we are weak. And whatever the outcome, if we are trusting Him, if we are committed to Him, then, you know, some of the residual pain or the temporary pain here on earth, it's nothing compared to the eternal glory that we're going to experience with Him. Now, I'm just going to assume that somewhere along the way, some of you have gotten stuck in the recovery process. And it's just not exactly what it used to be. Um, it comes down to one of these 31 things and take your life back that we need to be doing and never stop. It's the word searching. When we're searching, we're rejecting distortion and manipulation because I search for wisdom and truth. And I get that only from God. And, and then once I search, I choose, refusing to believe the lie that I am stuck forever. I exercise my freedom to choose to do what? To do the next right thing. It's never a wrong thing to humble yourself. It is wrong to live in humiliation when you are a, a fantastic creature of God. But this, this humility that, that brings on a willingness to work, you, you never arrive, uh, you never have to act like you've arrived, you're always in process. And that's what I want for you. Now, I hope uh, that if you don't have a Life Recovery Bible, you'll get one at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Uh, get one of the workbooks. There's the general workbook. But maybe today it will prompt you to get that grief workbook that so many people have found help and hope through. Don't struggle alone. There are a lot of online meetings. We can help you find one or find a counselor or something if you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Thanks for joining me for Life Recovery today. Thanks for joining us for Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. We hope this program has helped you integrate God's truth and wisdom into your recovery journey. This program is brought to you by New Life Ministries, and it's your support that keeps this program on the air. When you contact us for any reason, be sure to let us know that you watch on NRB. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to liferecoverytoday.net. Please join us again next week for more Life Recovery Today.